Hi, welcome to Midday Prayers. Uh, as you probably guess, it's not midday when we're recording these, but uh, we are um, not around for today. So these have been recorded in advance. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you found the link and you're uh, picking us up and you're joining with us for um, Midday Prayers recorded. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, there's not an opportunity to interact in terms of uh, kind of putting ideas down and whatever because of the way the comments work on a recorded. But uh, do leave your comment so that we know that you've joined us. It would be good for us to be able to just catch up with who's been online. And, uh, yeah, just let us know that you've been uh, with us today for prayers. So as we go through the, the service, we're going to be looking at Psalm 71. We're going to be reading from Galatians 1, looking at uh, verse 11 through to 24. And we're going to be using uh, a hymn by Timothy Dudley Smith to help us in our prayers of praise, but also in our prayers of uh, our prayers for others as well. So the hymn, for those of you that like to look it up in advance, is Lord for the years your love has kept and guided. OK, mm -hmm. so hopefully people have found it yeah. and are clicking in. Right. and are joining us for prayers so we will get going uh, without any further ado mm -hmm. so we're going to start in our usual way with uh, our responses please join in uh, as we go grace mercy and peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ be with you and, and also, also with, with you. you this is the day that the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it. OK, so we're going to sing and no, we're not going to sing. No, Whoa, please no we're sing. not singing. <laughs> we are going to uh, read the first two verses. People off their lunch. You probably will. Yeah, we're going to read the first two verses uh, of the hymn. Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided. Do you want to start? Yeah, why not? Go on, you start. Thank you. Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided, urged and inspired us, cheered us on our way, sought us and saved us, pardoned and provided. Lord of the years, we bring our thanks today. Lord, for that word, the word of life which fires us, speaks to our hearts and sets our souls ablaze, teaches and trains rebukes us and inspires us. Lord of the word, receive your people's praise. Amen. Amen. We'll come back to that in Amen. a bit. So we're going to turn to our uh, Bible readings and we're going to look firstly from uh, Psalm, Psalm uh, 71. And uh, I'm going to start reading. You um, we're going to read the whole Psalm. I'm going to read uh, to 11. Is that right? Up to and, and including 11. Up to and including 11, and then Carita's going to take over. And we're reading from uh, Carita's Bible, which is the New Living Translation. It is. Okay. O oh Lord, I have come to you for protection. Don't let me be disgraced. Save me and rescue me. For you do what is right. Turn your ear to listen to me and set me free. Be my rock of safety where I can always hide. Give the order to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. My God, rescue me from the power of the wicked, from the clutches of cruel oppressors. O Lord, you alone are my hope. I've trusted you, O Lord, from childhood. Yes, you have been with me from birth. From my mother's womb you have cared for me. No wonder. I am always praising you. My life is an example to many because you have been my strength and protection. That is why I can never stop praising you. I declare your glory all day long. And now in my old age, don't set me aside. Don't abandon me when my strength is failing. For my enemies are whispering against me. They are plotting together to kill me. They say God has abandoned him. Let's go and get him, for no one will help him now. 
Oh God, don't stay away. My God, please hurry to help me. Bring disgrace and destruction on my accusers. Humiliate and shame those who want to harm me. But I will keep on hoping for your help. I will praise you more and more. I will tell everyone about your righteousness. All day long I will proclaim your saving power, though I am not skilled with words. I will praise your mighty deeds, O Sovereign Lord. I will tell everyone that you alone are just. O God, you have taught me from my earliest childhood, and I constantly tell others about the wonderful things you do. Now that I am old and grey, do not abandon me, O God. Let me proclaim your power to this new generation, your mighty miracles to all who come after me. Your righteousness, O God, reaches to the highest heavens. You have done such wonderful things. Who can compare with you, O God? You have allowed me to suffer much hardship, but you will restore me to life again and lift me up from the depths of the earth. You will restore me to even greater honour and comfort me once again. Then I will praise you with music on the harp, because you are faithful to your promises, O my Lord. I will sing praises to you with a lyre, O Holy One of Israel. I will shout for joy and sing your praises, for you have ransomed me. I will tell about your righteous deeds all day long, for everyone who tried to hurt me has been shamed and humiliated. Mm. So that's the psalm. Yeah, it's a long that's psalm. That's the psalm. It's a long psalm, but it's a it's an interesting psalm. Actually, it's not quite as um, bleak as perhaps some we've been <laughs> reading recently. Um, it's not a lamenting psalm. This mm. is it's actually a psalm. You can you can get the sense of a journey from this psalm, and I talk about journeys a lot actually. But it's yeah. I think life is a journey, and um, this psalm is is the psalmist. It's kind of reflecting, isn't it, yeah. on, on on how God has been there for him. So the mm-hmm. faithfulness of God, how he can depend on God, and um, but also how God has been with him from the very beginning. Yeah. It talks about, doesn't it? You have been with me from birth, yeah. from my mother's womb. You have cared for me. No wonder I am always praising you. So there's that sense of recognizing from the very beginning, from before he could even. Or well, the psalmist could even recognise that God was was overseeing them. Mm. There was this sense of you know that I am mm. I can praise you because you're with me, and and it feels like as the twilight years yeah, are hitting the, now I'm old and grey hitting the psalmist. He's kind of saying, "Please be there." Yeah, you know, almost almost now. almost worried that God's going to mm. turn his back on them. And give up on them, mm. and and there's something about that journey and God going with us through that journey that I think is is really really important. And it isn't an easy journey. I mean, He's put mm. in here in verse twenty, "You have allowed me to suffer much hardship." Mm. So you know, there's not like a, this isn't reflecting on mm. a life that's been mm. easy and and stress free, mm. um, but definitely. Uh, I'm reminded of of Paul when he talks about running the race. Yeah, running the race. And stay in the course, and receiving the prize, and and in a way that's almost the psalmist is mm. is saying that. Come on, look, stay with me to the end. And, and I think there's something in here for us as we go through life, how we can we can um, perhaps start our Christian life full of enthusiasm. God's with us. We can do everything. Nothing is impossible. We can tell the world about yeah. what what, what God has done for us. But then as time goes on, as as the scars begin to form, as people hurt us, as things happen in our life that that are painful, perhaps we don't finish as well as mm. we start. We we wear we we're worn out. We're tired. Mm. We're feeling perhaps let down at times, and and that's when, like the psalmist, we need to call out again and ask God to remind us of his presence and yeah. and to sing pray and to keep singing our praises even in the face of 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 hardship and difficulty it does feel like there's that effort to keep on mm. praising doesn't it mm. i like this bit that says my life is an example to many mm. because you have been my strength and protection you know that that's a good verse isn't it that's not my life has been an example to many because i've been wonderful mm. it's i my life is an example because god has seen me through mm-hmm. 
all yeah. the things that yeah. we know that they, he's done wrong or all the tough stuff that life's thrown at him. So keep running the race. Keep going. Keep going. Don't give up. Don't get disheartened. Don't when when people kind of seem to gather around or it feels like the world is against yeah. you. Keep going. Be strong. Uh, hold and firm. That's why we chose that hymn, mm. the Lord for the years your love has kept ignited. That's to me is is that kind of thing as well. Mm. Looking back on the years that God has mm. been faithful to us and mm-hmm. and helped us and and kept us on our way, and then looking forwards to the. Um, Praising mm. God for the word Sitting of his in your rocking chair with your blanket over your knees, <laughs> reflecting on life and uh, recognising how God has, has been with you through it all. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay. You're going to need a rocking <laughs> chair, are you? I was thinking of Val Dunican, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, gosh, now you are sounding old there now. <laughs> my you, parents, if they're watching... Old and grown. My parents used to like Val Dunican. Yeah, had a guardian, didn't they? <laughs> he did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <sighs> <laughs> Perhaps we should read Galatians. Perhaps we should move on and read uh, Galatians. Galatians we, 1. Yep. Starting at verse 11. And are you reading this, did you say? Yep. Okay, I did. You did. You got in there. I did. Um, so this is, it says in my Bible, Paul's message comes from Christ. That's how it's described. Mm-hmm. Um, Dear brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that the gospel message I preach is not based on mere human reasoning. I received my message from no human source, and no one taught me. Instead, I received it by direct revelation from Jesus Christ. You know what I was like when I followed the Jewish religion, how I violently persecuted God's church. I did my best to destroy it. I was far ahead of my fellow Jews in my zeal for the traditions of my ancestors. But even before I was born, God chose me and called me by his marvellous grace. Then it pleased him to reveal his son to me, so that I would proclaim the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. When this happened, I did not rush out to consult with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to consult with those who were apostles before I was. Instead, I went away into Arabia, and later I returned to the city of Damascus. Then three years later I went to Jerusalem to get to know Peter and stayed with him for 15 days. The only other apostle I met at that time was James, the Lord's brother. I declare before God that what I am writing to you is not a lie. After that visit I went north into the provinces of Syria and Sicilia and still the Christians in the churches in Judea didn't know me personally. All they knew was that people were saying, The one who used to persecute us is now preaching the very faith he tried to destroy. And they praised God because of me. Mm. There is in there that little line again, isn't there? That God knew me before I was born. Even before I was born, God chose me. Mm. So there is a recognition from Paul, almost a repetition of that Mm. element of the Psalms that God has known him from the beginning. But what I love about this passage is that, in a way, Paul is dismissing everything that he ever knew and learnt and practised as um, a Jew, as, as as part of that Pharisee movement. Mm-hmm. And almost like, you know, these things that I, I learnt, I was better than all the rest of my generation, almost. I was the yeah. top dog in all of this. But I left all that behind. And actually, it almost counts as nothing. Mm. Because this is about what God has done mm. through his, his son, Jesus, in my life. Mm. And I don't have masses of teaching from other people. It's not like I went and learned what it meant to be a Christian from all kinds of people. Mm. Paul is telling us, I learned because God revealed it to me. Yeah. God revealed himself to me through Christ. And mm. I learned through Christ. And then at the end, you can almost, you can almost skip over this. But uh, he, verse 23, they only heard the report. The man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they praised God because of me. They praised God because of Paul, who got his understanding from God. So God is glorified. They're not praising, they're not glorifying Paul no. for what Paul did and his wonderful teaching or he's he's the kind of guy that we need to follow around and, and learn from. 
No, they didn't they're, even know him. They're so. praising. They're mm. praising God because of what they're hearing and yeah. what God has done what God has through done. Paul. Yeah, uh, and in spite of perhaps Paul's background. Yeah, and the way that he's totally changed mm. Paul around. Mm. And we talked about this idea that actually, um, this is about a personal relationship mm. with Jesus. This Paul is is saying. I didn't learn it. I didn't mm. study Christianity as such. He's he's saying, I met Jesus. God yeah. revealed Himself to me through Jesus. Yeah. And I, you know, I think in in this situation where we've been locked down, where we've been isolated, where we it's, we haven't been able to meet together mm. as church in the way that we normally would, that there has been that kind of. Um, responsibility on us i think to keep our relationship with jesus mm. going we were saying that actually people sometimes fall into the trap of equating their relationship with god or with their relationship with other christians mm. and the mm. church um and it's it's one thing that i've thought quite a lot about because it's one thing that um was a real um when we when you were deciding and we were praying about whether you should be ordained and whether you should go into ministry and that. One of the, the big concerns for us as parents was the impact that it would have on our family and on our children's faith in particular. Because if you've seen the statistics, the fallout among ministers' kids and, and um, vicars' children is high. They don't tend to go in um, keep their faith. You know, there's there's a big fallout, and we were worried about that. But I think one of the things that we felt very strongly, and one of the things that I've always been, is a real thing for me, is this idea of separating your relationship with God from your relationship with the church and with others. That we need a personal relationship mm. with God, because God doesn't let us down. Mm. People will mess up. They mm -hmm. do mess up. They get it wrong. The church is... A bit better perhaps than other people but we're still only human and we still get make things mistakes, wrong and yeah. we still make mistakes and we still mess up mm. and there are undoubtedly times when the church people and, and church family causes much hurt to other people mm. but god won't do that god doesn't let us down and so we need to separate the two mm. and we need to be responsible for that relationship and that strength of relationship mm. it comes from knowing jesus mm. yeah helpful so put your comments in we won't be able to read them till we come back but uh, put your we comments in and we will we'll read them and yeah. it'll be interesting to see how you um pick up on these passages mm. and what comes out for you that would be really good to see that so we're going to move into a time of prayer and as we said we were going to use the remaining verses of lord for the years to to kind of help us focus our prayers in in different ways so um, we're going to come to a time of prayer. We're going to use these verses as a, as a starting point, a springboard for prayer. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then we'll finish with the Lord's Prayer. Yeah, and leave a little bit of quiet. We'll leave some space in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, um, so we'll talk a little bit. We'll read the verse. We'll have some quiet and we'll move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing we're going to pray for is um, prayers for our nation, for people and for leaders um and for yeah people of all generations perhaps that are in one way or another struggling for whatever reason uh, at this time and we'll use verse three as our guide lord for our land in this our generation spirits oppressed by pleasure wealth and care for young and old for commonwealth and nation. Lord of our land, be pleased to hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And then verse 4 takes the theme of praying for our world. And our world, we know, is in trouble at the moment. There is pain 
everywhere. Lots of countries are really struggling and people all around the world are struggling. So verse 4. Lord, for our world, where men disown and doubt you, loveless in strength and comfortless in pain, hungry and helpless, lost indeed without you, Lord of the world, we pray that Christ may reign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And then finally, we're going to be praying for ourselves using the words of the hymn. And the idea is to think about how we might echo the, the psalmist and Paul and, and become more like Jesus so that others will look at us and see Jesus and others will not give glory to us but will give glory to God for what they hear and what they see. Lord for ourselves in living power remake us, self on the cross and Christ upon the throne, past put behind us, for the future take us, Lord of our lives to live for Christ alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any notices to share with you today. Not that we have not had advanced notice Not that we've had advanced notice of. So um, <laughs> join tomorrow at midday for uh, Midday Prayers again, uh, led by St Peter's. And yeah. we will see you uh, live. I'm reminded of that. On Thursday. If you notice this notice, you'll notice that this notice is not worth noticing. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so there we go. On that note. There is no notice. On that note, we'll see you on Thursday. Uh, mm. Yeah, and join with St Peter's tomorrow for Midday Prayers. Thank you. Close with a blessing. Oh yes. You were going to close with a blessing. I was going to close with a blessing. You were. And I almost didn't, so I hope you're still there. We <laughs> tricked you. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Now you can go. <laughs> Thank you for joining us.